Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to work on a recipe that's been um, used in my family for probably generations and uh, one that I remember my mum making. Not exactly the way I'm going to make it, but so very similar and I'm sure that um, it was probably something that your family's made too. Now, normally this dish is made in the fall and winter. I'm talking about beef stew, um, but we are right at the beginning of spring. Um, I don't see much snow. There's a pile out there actually. Um, so it's still really cool weather and probably the last time that I'll make stew um, again until the fall. So I am going to do that for you today and um, it gives me an opportunity to share a little bit of information about my family while I work on it. So let me gather up um, the things that I need to get started and we'll do that right away. Uh, trying to gather up most everything right here that I need because this this will move along reasonably quickly. Um, today we are using beef for this stew but as a child growing up my dad was a hunter. He wasn't just a hunter he was a big game guide and he guided a lot of Americans who came to Canada to um, hunt the big game. So things like um, mountain sheep, goats, elk, deer even, um, he, he guided uh, for all of those things. And so I never had beef, I think, till I was around 12 years old because we only really ate the meat that dad hunted. And then about that time, dad went to work for the local sawmill. So he was no longer guiding um, hunters. He wasn't a licensed game guide anymore. And I think he still had his license, he just didn't do it. He went to work for the sawmill. Because now we were a family of four and soon to be five and um, the money was better there. It was a more consistent year-round labor. So we would have had wild meat. Today I don't have any wild meat. So I am using skinny beef. Now oh, that got loud. So I'm using skinny beef that I bought at the local grocery store. And this is better than a pound and a half. I think it's, it's close to two pounds. But however much you want to make that's what you, you should make. You can do this, you can scale this up or scale it back according to your family's needs. And what we're trying to do is just to seal in the juices here. And so we just want to get a little brown on this. And if, if you weren't in my kitchen right now, in all likelihood I'll be, I would be doing this in a big pot right on the stove. But I do want you to be able to see what I'm up to without having to move my camera around the lot. So we will do most of these sides, get them brown, and just keep moving it around while we do that. So this is so simple, and you can juice this up however you like it. Some people use wine in their stews and um, other fancy ingredients that, well, we, we simply didn't have or did we have access to. Our community was not only small, but we only went to town every couple of weeks just to stock up on the things that we needed. Um, that, that was until I went to school. Well, even then, I went to school in town, but my parents still didn't come to town anymore often, um, except my dad's go to work, so then he could start picking up more ingredients for my mom if she needed them. And um, I actually remember the first box of cold cereal that dad ever brought home from the store, and how exciting that was. And uh, 
because we've never had cold cereal before. Well, I am dating myself. Um, so, onions were something that mom could keep. So there were always, everything started with onions. And we, um, I think we're all, I'm trying to think through my brothers and sisters, but I think everybody likes onions. Well, it's been a while since I asked a couple of them what their needs are. I think maybe my brother Ed has trouble with onions. But other than that, we have all grown up eating onions. They were something that we could grow in our own garden. Although the piece of land we lived on didn't produce really great gardens. It wasn't for lack of trying on my parents' part. Um, I remember several years where we moved gardens from one part of the property to another part of the property trying to, trying to find the right place. Hauling loads of manure from Grandma's farm and really doing our best to um, grow our own garden. And mostly, ultimately, we ended up eating out of my grandmother's um, root cellar through the winters because she grew an enormous garden and she only lived a couple miles down the road. So if we were out of something, um, we would be able to just go down the road to Grandma's house rather than driving the 11 miles into town. So that made things easier for us. So just keep turning these around. There may be a little too many here in this pan because they want to steam and we want them to burn. But try not to overcrowd the pan. Now something my mom did that I do a little differently is she used to flour the meat before she put it into the pan, which, you know, will help to thicken the stew later. But I find that the flour burns to the bottom of the pan so easily that I have gotten away from that habit. There. I think all the sides are just about had a chance to be kissed by the heat now. And so I am going to just leave this for another minute and I am going to um, transfer the, the meat into my big pot. In the meantime, I'm going to get ready some cloves of garlic. And um, this was actually, honestly, something that didn't go into our stews that I ever recall. Because I think, um, I don't remember my grandmother ever growing garlic, or my mother. And I don't think it's that hard to grow it, so I'm not sure why they didn't. But it just wasn't a very popular item that I remember growing up. So I'm just going to chunk these pieces up, give them a pretty rough chop. I don't need them to be finely diced or anything like that. Um, but they do add something when you're cooking with beef. Okay, so now I'm going to get all that to reach for the pot. <laughs> Put the lid down there. Just shove a few things around. There we go. Now I'm going to move this meat into the big pot. And I'm going to put the onions. Maybe I need a different scooper here. There. And then I'll put the onions into this frying pan and I'm going to check. I've turned my frying pan down to 350 degrees. So it's got to run away. And another one. Oh goodness. Now we've still got the meat juices in this pan which are delicious and we're going to make sure we get them all straight up. So in for just a few minutes, 
till they start to become translucent am I going to put in the onions into this pan. And a few other things we'll just go, on. go ahead. We'll keep working because we're going to get it all into the pot and then um, when it's all in the pot, it's going to go into the oven. So, I'm going to take out, I'm going to use three carrots and give them a quick peel. And get them ready. And just turn that down a little bit more. Because it's in the oven so going to be in the oven so long, we don't really need to leave it um, cooking the onions too long there. So my mom was the youngest of three children, born to her mom and dad, and then her dad passed away and she was just a month old. And um, her siblings were raised together in a different home than she was. My grandmother at the time of my grandpa's death was only 21 years old. And she went on to marry and have six more kids after, after her first husband died. But her first three children were put into foster care. And my mom was adopted when she was 11 months old. So she was raised as an only child and she really uh, missed having siblings, so we um, we certainly benefit, benefited from all the love she could give that she'd been storing up. She was a very loving person, told us every day that she loved us multiple times, just in case we forgot. We were lucky that way. We always knew it. Sometimes, you know, when we were in our teens, we may not have taken that to heart as much, but ultimately we all knew that we were loved. Dad um, hunted right until the last few years before he passed away. He was 83 when he passed away. So, but I think the last few years he... Uh, he actually sat and watched the game more than he hunted anything. He, my dad was a knitter, and he used to knit socks, and he would take with him on his hunting trips an ice cream pail, and in his ice cream pail he had everything he needed for um, making socks, and he would find a game trail, and he'd sit down with his back to a tree, and he would take out his knitting and he would knit away. And if something came out, um, he had a great appreciation for animals. So if something happened to step out onto the trail, then he would um, definitely um, have shot it. Well, I shouldn't say definitely because I, I think in those last few years, I'm not sure he would have been that definite about it. But um, he would have been ready for it at any rate. So I'm not sure if, because I was talking, I'm not sure if you've been following along, but I've transferred the onions into the pot uh, with the garlic. And I put some of this um, one quart um, beef stock, which is low sodium, into the frying pan because I want to get all the bits off the bottom. So I'm just going to work them off. And then the other half of that, I put into the pot and I am going to just dump that in there in a minute. There we go. One of the things that um, my dad loved was stew and he didn't really care what kind of stew it was. And my stepmom, Helen, she raised seven kids, and she never really learned how to cook for two people. And I remember one day my dad phoned me and said, 
hey sis, do you think you could come for dinner tonight? And I said, well, sure I could, that'd be great. And he said, oh, thank you so much. Helen made a stew day before yesterday and we're still eating it. But if you come tonight, I won't have to eat it tomorrow too. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, the times we had. So, I'm gonna unclog my pan and I'm gonna dump the juice the uh, stock into there. Maybe I could set this aside too. It'll give us a little more room. So everything is getting in there now. I'm going to add uh, these three carrots that I just made into coins. I have two cups of tomatoes. Um, I canned them a couple of years ago and I think I'm down to my, this might be the last jar and it's well sealed. And these are um, ones that I canned myself, not re-canned. So there's more juice on them. So I'm gonna put that in there. I am going to put in some tomato paste. Now I have tomato paste in a tube because I like that I can control it so much better. When you open up a little tin, then you're stuck with the tin open and you have to try and figure out how you're gonna use it all up or how you're gonna deal with it. With the tube, you just take out what you need and I'm gonna put in about two tablespoons in here and you put the lid back on and put it in the fridge. And it can be found in every grocery store now, um, tomato paste in a tube. I think I also have about two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, wash your sister sauce or whatever you like to call it. I'm gonna use about a tablespoon and a half of that. And that's about it for now. I think I've got everything in there, not quite. I'm just gonna stir it for a minute until I make sure that all that tomato paste is broken up. And then I'm going to add, oops, splashing it all over the place. Um, I'm going to just add a few simple spices because an old fashioned beef stew doesn't have a whole lot of different things in it. So I have about a teaspoon of pepper, just plain black pepper about a teaspoon of salt and I'm not putting any more than that in there right now because um, even though that's 30% let me taste it you know what I'm not going to add that salt at all I'm just going to add the pepper because the tomatoes had salt in them too and add the pepper and I've got four kind of battered little um, bits of bay leaf that I'm going to add to this Give it a stir. Now, I'm going to put this into the oven and I am going to put it on 325 degrees for about an hour and a half. At that point, I will add some chopped up potatoes to the pot and let it cook probably another 30 minutes. So, if, if you test it at the one hour mark, and the meat is tender, then put your potatoes in then. But if you leave it till uh, an hour and a half and then it's good, put your potatoes in then. Don't leave it longer than an hour and a half before you add the potatoes to it. If it's not tender at an hour and a half, it's probably not gonna get that way. I'm gonna put the lid on. I'm gonna put this in the oven. And when it's time to add the potatoes to this dish, I'll come back. It's a pretty simple, pretty simple dish and um, one that we had frequently because it was easy. This is the crock pot of old in my mother's house. This would have gone into the uh, wood stove that was in our kitchen and um, dinner would have been ready at the end of the day which left her time to do things like bake bread and wash um, clothes. We had an old washing machine that had a gas engine on it. So 
she had to wash clothes that way. There were lots and lots of things to do and she certainly didn't have the conveniences that I have today to get through her chores. So I will be back in a little bit. So this is all ready to go. And uh, just before I brought the meal over here to the counter, I mixed up three tablespoons of butter with three tablespoons of flour to make a roux. And I put this on the stove top, brought it to a boil, and I stirred in, it's just like a blob, of the roux. And keep stirring it until it has all dissolved in there. And then let it cook for a couple of minutes after that. And that will help to thicken it a little bit. Um, the more roux you add, the more, uh, the thicker it'll be. And this is just looking and smelling delicious. It's been cooking away for the last couple of hours. And we're going to serve it tonight with a piece of cornbread that I made yesterday. If you're interested in the cornbread recipe, let me know in the box below in the comments and I'll do a video on that as well. But this is what's for dinner tonight at our house and um, we're, we're ready to eat. I hope you've enjoyed this video today, folks, and if you have, that you will um, give us a like. Consider subscribing to, your, to the channel, and I look forward to seeing you again soon on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.